I very lucky to see you all. In our times, uh, not very, very easy times. Uh, it's uh, very good that we all can uh, cooperate in such interesting conference. <clears throat> okay, let's start. I want to draw attention to the experience of the transition uh, from a capitalist to a socialist economy during the period of a new economic policy in the USSR. For a number of reasons, which I will not touch on here, this transition turned out to be incomplete. Nevertheless, the period of the new economic policy demonstrated a number of effective solutions that allowed for such a transition. In the conditions of the USSR, in the pre-revolution economy, the capitalist mode of production did not cover the entire economic system. A significant part of, the, uh, of it uh, remained pre-capitalist, which continued to develop in the direction of capital. Therefore, the rapid dismantling of not only capitalist, but also market relations, commodity relations, could not be the right economic policy for transition. However, at the turn of 20s and 30s of the 20th century, under the pressure of very serious geopolitical and internal political circumstances in the USSR, the path of accelerated breaking of capitalist and pre-capitalist relation was chosen. This has led to a number of long-term negative consequences. In order to avoid such negative trends, it is all the more important for us to study the forms of transformation of production relations that they used during the period of the new economic policy. The model of the Soviet economy during the net period was not a centrally planned economy, but a commodity economy, market economy, including in public sector. The enterprises nationalized by the state worked for the market in order to make a profit. That is, they largely operated without capitalists, but in the conditions of semi-capitalist and market production relations. However, it was no longer a free and unlimited market. The state regulated the market economy both in relation to the state sector and in relation to the non-state power. The state regulation based on the strategic planning and the first plan of this kind was the state plan of the electrification of Russia adopted in 1920. On the basis of a commission elaborated this plan, the Gosplan State Committee on Planning was created in 1921. The methods of planning regulation in that period included the state purchasing. About 27% of the production of state industry produced for state contracts. Direct budget investments, budget subsidies, tax and credit preferences, agreements on prices. This made it possible to focus economic development on achieving strategic goals. And first of all, on the technical reconstruction of the economy, uh, because it was a purpose to uh, improve the means of production, improve the uh, productive forces of uh, uh, USSR to the level of the most developed countries. But did such regulation mean a movement towards social? Subsequent historical development has shown us that a number of methods used during the years of the new economic policy can be integrated into the system of a capitalist economy. Therefore, 
The main difference between the Soviet economic model of 20s was the goals for which these methods were used. State regulation in the period of NEP was not limited to solving problems related to growth rates and technological modernization. It is possible to note the different social and economic goals which are breaking through the uh, frameworks of the capitalist economy. It, the uh, purposeful policy of reducing unemployment and successfully achieving full employment, which is absent in the capital system. Labor legislation was very favorable for workers. It was a systematic increase in public spending on education and healthcare on the broad egalitarian basis. The use of various forms of employee participation in solving production development issues was the first steps to uh, make rank and file uh, employees participants of production relations of a new kind. The production relations which intended to be social. The regulation of the economy during the NEP period was not limited only to the activities of the state. Trade unions and numerous public organizations took part in the regulation of social issues. I can, uh, I can stress that in the presentation of Ludmila Bulavka, it was shown a very uh, colorful picture of the cultural development of the 20s in the uh, USSR. It is worth noting that the orientation of production to the interests of the consumers in the NEP economy was not limited only to the market self-regulation, but was based on the agreements between syndicates, which united state enterprises, and consumer cooperation bodies acting on behalf of millions of their shareholders. Uh, it's also possible to uh, say that consumer cooperatives and different other form of cooperatives, societies of mutual credits, sales cooperatives, machine rental cooperatives, production cooperatives, were used to establish close ties between peasant economy and the economy of the public sector. Uh, these methods uh, were implemented in the USSR mostly for the state sector economy, but some of them are suitable for the private sector also. It is possible to see that some of the similar methods were implemented over the period of the New Deal of Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration in the United States and in post-war period in some countries of Western Europe and in the Japan. Thus, the NEP period was the first historical experience of the indicative planning in the mixed economy. And uh, I can repeat that the main difference between the Soviet model of the indicative planning and the indicative planning in the capitalist economies is the difference in the social goals and in the balance of social needs. The shift to the direct planning in the USSR accompanied the very short period of active involvement of working people in management and planning at team and factory level. Unfortunately, instead of increase of these different uh, channels of involvement, the further development of Soviet model of planned economy resulted in the growing of bureaucratization and of suspension of working people from real participation in the decision-making. So it's a uh, 
very negative trend, which not uh, which not defined by the central planning itself, but defined by the very bureaucratized and over centralized model of central planning, which implemented in the USSR in the 30s of 20th century. Uh, it's a uh, big question about the reason of these negative trends and negative development, which finally resulted in the uh, crash of the um, Soviet system. But uh, my purpose was to uh, pay attention to the uh, experience of the 20s of a new economic policy, which uh, contain a lot of uh, different and very interesting methods of the transformation from capitalist and pre-capitalist economy to the socialist economy. Thank you very much.